kind of a random smorgasbord of ammo too. Okay, let's get some targets. <laughs> Good. Howdy folks, it's Adriel the Hunting Gear Guy, and this is a Winchester Model 94. Now it's a bit goofy doing a review on a gun that's uh, been around for 130 years, but maybe some people out there just got one and they want to know a little bit of the details about how to use it, or some of the advantages and disadvantages and that kind of thing. So uh, why don't we get straight into it? So this rifle is empty, my chamber is empty, and you can see down below there the magazine tube is empty, so why don't we take a closer look at this thing. Now, your Winchester 94 might look a little bit different than this one. There was changes made at various times. I'll put more details in my article. There's more details on Wikipedia, and there's more details all over the place. Any rifle that's been produced for 100, year, 100 plus years is going to have some, uh, some variations in models. Uh, this one in particular is a special edition. Now, Winchester made lots of special editions. This is the... Uh, Canadian Centennial. It's got it marked on the, the back there. I'll show an overlay of these just so it's easier to read them. It's got a little bit of engraving on it. It's got an octagonal barrel on it as well. So those are the, the special features on this one. Uh, other than that, we've got a steel curved butt plate on there, which I find the curve is fine. Some of the, some, some curves on some rifles, like I've got a black powder, the curve is like insane on it and actually pokes into your shoulder. This one, Feels fine, feels fine. Uh, pretty nice wood stock on it. It's a lever action or lever action, depending on which country you're in and all that. I'm not getting into that today. Don't, not in the comments, not doing it. <laughs> Anyways, there's our, uh, our lever action. Uh, it pulls the, uh, the bolt back and opens it up, pops a shell from the uh, magazine tube onto the lifter, kind of like a shotgun, and, uh, and then feeds it in. And then finally our block, you can see right at the back here, that block pulls up into place and that's what holds that bolt uh, in there is that sliding block that goes up. You can see that our hammer is back right now. If we're hunting and we just loaded and we're going to go uh, hunting afterwards, we would probably bring it down to half cock, just like that. So there the hammer is not resting on the firing pin and it's in a safe position. If I pull the trigger, it's not gonna go off. It's not gonna go off if I bump it. If I see my deer, I carefully pull it back and then I take my shot. Also on the side here, we have our loading port. That's where we'll throw our shells. We'll pop our shells in there. The tube will hold seven and the chamber will hold one. So this is seven plus one for capacity, which is a lot. I don't know how many times you, how many deer you're gonna shoot, but uh, you got lots of ammo. You got lots of them that, uh, that you can pop in here. Now, because we're using a tube magazine, what that means is that our ammo has to be, you can't have like pointed ammo. If you were to run pointed ammo, let's just use this 6.5 stuff here, for example, or actually this 2.23. Uh, if we ran pointed ammo, you can see that that full metal jacket tip is gonna be resting right on the primer. And then if we get some back and forth shaking due to firing or whatever, maybe it would chain fire. So with uh, tube magazine guns of the era, they typically run a, a very flat round or uh, just a straight up a flat tip uh, on them so that when they're resting on the primer in front, uh, the surface area is very dispersed and it's not gonna light it off. You need like that impact to, uh, to light off a, a primer, right? So that's our safety uh, when loading up a tube full of center fire uh, rifle ammunition in this rifle. Now, because this one's from 1967, it's top eject. So when I pull this, that shell just pops straight out the top. That made these things a little bit hard to scope. So if you wanted to scope this, uh, you could run like a side mount uh, scope on it, but uh, the shells might like hit it and get in the way and bounce back into the action. Uh, later on, Winchester went, went, went with an angle eject. If you went with like a Marlin 336, they eject like straight out the side. But uh, for an iron sight, it doesn't matter. Like eject straight, like, yeah, kick it straight out the top. That's fine. You don't need to have any control on it. Just get it out of there. And I talked about our hammer safety in terms of that, uh, that half cock. We also have another safety on here and that's the lever or lever safety. If you're not pressing it down and you just try pressing the trigger, it won't fire. You have to be pressing that, this down. There's actually a little 
bit of steel there. As you press that down, now you can actually fire the uh, rifle. Kind of like a grip safety, if you will, but uh, for a lever. Now for the sights on this one, it's kind of a semi buckhorn. It's not quite a complete buckhorn. There's like a, a little round bit on both sides. Some of these have, uh, have quite pronounced buckhorns. Uh, we can adjust our sights. So if we need to go a little bit further out, rear sight, we want the bullet to go higher. We move the rear sight higher. So I could move it up like that. Or if I'm closer in, I could move it down like that. More than likely though, you just sight it in for the ammo that you're using. So if you're using 170s, you might want to sight a little bit higher. If you're using 150s, you could set it a little bit lower. They're a little bit flatter. There's not really a lot of difference. Um, and you can very easily make those adjustments with that rear sight. That's enough talking. Why don't we uh, take this to a sand pit and do a bit of shooting. So as you can see, lots of fun, uh, lots of speed with this thing. You can fire quite fast uh, with the gun, get those rounds off uh, fairly fast and fairly accurately. And uh, it's you're not really at much of a disadvantage uh, running this thing compared to uh, like a semi-automatic or something like that. It is slower uh, and there's that little bit of uh, noise in between every time and you have to like, you know, uh, move your sights around a little bit when you uh, when you fire, but it is still pretty quick. Uh, and, uh, and, and pretty easy to get rounds on target. Now, should you get a Winchester 94? Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question. Now, three to five years ago, these things were going for like 400 bucks, 400, 450. And the answer back then might've been maybe, uh, at close range. Uh, I, I, this is like a, a really neat rifle look for a couple of things. One is that you can just carry it like that. The receiver is so nice and small that it's very easy to just carry it like this. Uh, this one doesn't actually have uh, sling swivels on it. You don't really need them. You can just carry it like that and, you know, walk down the trail or whatever. Uh, this one does have a saddle ring on there. The idea with this is you get uh, a little strap of uh, leather on here, uh, make a little loop out of it and put that on the, on the horn of your uh, saddle or, or tie it to the saddle somewhere. Uh, modern days, you could run a single point sling on that boy, bad boy. I'll show you a couple of photos of that and just pop that out in front of you if you wanted a sling on this thing, which I don't know. I, I, I really like the, the, just the trail carry with your hands just right around the receiver. It just feels really great. You're really into control of the gun. You can pop it up very quickly to, uh, to get that shot off. So I like that method of carry with this firearm. But these things also come with a lot of disadvantages. Uh, I mentioned the scoping, um, even the new ones, like, yeah, you can scope them, but, uh, at some point you got to ask why. Uh, 3030 is not a particularly powerful cartridge. Uh, there's 3030 and there's uh, 65 Swede and the 65 Swede is just much more powerful <laughs> and it's about as old as, as the 3030. This was just a, in, a, in a bygone era when we used like lower powered rounds because we were shooting close range and we wanted to save on money, save on uh, on, on the powder in the, the case. but. These days, that kind of stuff is just too inexpensive. It's just easier to get a 308 or a 6.5 Creedmoor or something like that. Now, what those cartridges are going to give you is more accuracy and w just way more power on game. So uh, for a moose and, and that kind of thing at like a little bit longer of a distance, they're just going to more reliably kill the animal. Uh, they're going to be available in bolt action rifles that are inexpensive. These things are going for like a thousand bucks right now, plus a thousand bucks plus. Uh, and... You can get a Savage Axis, uh, if you get a really good sale on, at Cabela's or something like that, for under 500 bucks. Uh, all, all this is Canadian, right? Uh, so for that price, uh, the, the Savage Axis is better for hunting because you're getting a more powerful cartridge, scope, uh, all the modern conveniences of a, of a new firearm. Uh, so f strictly for hunting, like a, a pure practical hunting po point of view, the newer bolt action rifle is going to be a better deal for you. Uh, but what if you want to hunt closer? What if you want to hunt with something that's got a little bit more um, 
age, maybe a little bit more patina, uh, maybe a little bit more history to it. Well, the 3030s are pretty cool for that kind of stuff. They're still very practical. They're still accurate enough, keeping in mind that most deer in, in North America are taken within 100 yards. So if you're taking a deer within 100 yards, iron sights and a 3030, it's fine. It, the, all the cartridges will do it. They're gonna do it for deer. They're gonna be great for it. And uh, the deer's not gonna know the difference that they got hit by the lowly 3030 compared to a 308 or something like that. It's only at longer distances where that's gonna really come into play. So again, if you wanted to do something close up, uh, if you wanted to have something a little bit cooler than just another black bolt action rifle with a scope, uh, maybe a Winchester 94 is the right uh, firearm to go hunting with. Thanks for watching.